Hello and welcome to this latest Accountancy Age web seminar. I'm Kevin Reid and I'm absolutely delighted to be hosting this 30 minute session sponsored by our friends at Energy Scanner on the fundamental topic of offering value added services to clients. Why should you and how do you do it? Uh, we're really lucky to have a panel of three experts to lead us towards value added enlightenment today. Um, directly on my left and from Energy Scanner is Nick Dwan and Nick leads on strategy and corporate development at Energy Scanner. Welcome. Uh, then we have two of the accounting profession superstars with us. Um, next to Nick is Bobby Lane. Um, Bobby is a partner at Shelley Stock Hutter, a regular commentator in the media on developing new business and services. Uh, Bobby qualified with BDO and has, for his sins, served as an FD in the past. Uh, last but not least, we have Carl Reader. Um, Carl is a director of D&T Chartered Accountants. Uh, he's author of the Startup Coach and the Franchising Handbook, franchising being one of his uh, particular specialisms. Um, both Carl and Bobby um, are regular commentators uh, with us uh, on Accountancy Age as well. So gentlemen, absolutely delighted to have you on board today. Uh, for our audience, there's only one house rule really. Um, if you're actually watching this web seminar live, uh, then please send us some questions in, which you should be able to do through your browser. Um, and you know, just send us through your uh, a penny for our thoughts really. Uh, we'll try and broach anything that you throw us over the next 30 minutes or so. Um, but to, to get the ball rolling, I think we'll hand over to you first, Nick. A um, couple of things. Can you give us an elevator pitch uh, for Energy Scanner and then lead into um, your discussions with SMEs and why this is a topic that's of particular interest to you? Sure, thanks. Um, well, we, we set out to solve a couple of problems that were prevalent in the, in the energy buying market for SMEs. Um, about 45% of small businesses in the UK are on what's called a default tariff. It means they pay about 110% more than they need to if they were on a contract. And the market generally is full of uh, issues. It lacks transparency. It's hard and time consuming for people to shop around and get a, a deal. So we decided to bring a couple of those problems to the table and, and come up with a technical solution to that using a, a, technology, a technology platform. So with Energy Scanner, you or if you're a small business, you or your advisor can go on there and it's a marketplace full of uh, Brit Britain's biggest energy companies through to its smallest and you can search around and find the best energy deal in, in a couple of minutes. And you yeah. said the, the important word that you, you mentioned there was advisor. Correct. Which is going to lead you to why you're here today. That's right. And we've found uh, since launching the product, or the service rather, that a large proportion of our customers or clients are actually accountants doing it, looking for energy deals on behalf of their clients. Now, the reason for that is, when we went and asked SMEs, is they, they are focused on growth. They're trying to, to survive effectively. Uh, and to do that, they need to put their effort into strategy, into, into new business development, expanding their, their offerings. They rely heavily on their accountants to tell them when it's time to do something from a cost perspective or to take care of costs. So the sound bites typically were, oh, I rely on my accountant to tell me when it's time to do something about energy. So we've found accountants that are using the service in, in, in a big way. Um, so far, we've had nothing but positive feedback. And one of the reasons we think um, it, it resonates so strongly with accountants is it lets the accountant be in control. He or she isn't putting his, his or her reputation on the line and saying to the client, here, you go and use this. They're using our service, finding a solution, and they're presenting that to the client at no cost. And it's typically, here, yeah, I've found a way to save you X amount of, of money each year on energy. You can now spend that on another, another offering. Okay, that's good stuff, Nick, and really nice overview of where we are. Um, Bobby, Carl, where is the current marketplace for accountants offering services outside of the traditional uh, tax and uh, accounting offerings, you know, and how have we, we got to here? Bobby, do you want to kick off? Well, I, th I think it's changed a lot over the last few years. I think uh, it depends on the size of the business, really, because uh, a small company might not have a large accounts department and might not have their own finance director or someone within a business. And we've seen a huge growth over the last few years of accountancy firms offering outsourcing services. So becoming the outsourcing department and the finance department of those businesses. So I think a lot of those companies are now saying, well, if we're outsourcing our finance department to you, anything to do with the numbers is your domain. 
So they're now saying, well, if we're looking at our costs and our cost structure, and you're my finance department, you should be looking at the costs and coming back to me and saying, you know, this is what we should be doing, how we should be addressing the costs and how we can reduce them. So I think what we've seen is, is the growth of those uh, clients looking to their accountants and their advisors for more than just box ticking. Uh, so has, has the world become a more complicated place? You know, even, you know, that we're seeing a, a burgeoning freelance community, but that doesn't seem very straightforward for, for them to manage their own affairs. I don't think it's become more complicated. I think what we've seen is the growth of business owners that are accepting what they're good at and trying to focus on what they're good at and saying, well, OK, I'm, I'm very good at selling uh, business development, as you said earlier, uh, but I'm not that great at running my business or running the back office. So what I'm going to do is go to an expert and, and use someone who knows what they're doing and bring them in. So I think we've seen the growth of people that are more open uh, to accepting that the areas where they're strong and the areas where they're not and bringing in the experts to help them. I think you've probably seen that in your, in your practice. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think, Bobby, uh, what, what you say is correct. I think there's also another factor at play here as well, which is automation's coming in. And that's something that, like it or lump it, it's going to happen. And a lot of the traditional accounting role and traditional tax preparation role, particularly for smaller businesses, will be eliminated by computers. And if Zero, QuickBooks or any of the other um, software providers don't do it, HMRC will. Yeah. So there's a practical requirement for accountants if they want to stay in business and to keep being profitable and retain their clients to actually start delivering something over and above adding up the numbers. And what's interesting about 